These red herrings are popping up left and right. They're all secret plots, okay? Like the thing with the the MAGA, with the American Indian, and you had the brother, I think his name is uh, Ephraim. Chief Ephraim, right. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. That's their media. Their media is a popular persuasion. Why? Because most people believe what they see on TV, what they see on the news. I believe it. Don't. Read it again. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. They try to stir up a commotion to get people against us. Go ahead. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. Yes, but they're not going to hit the gas. This is going to keep going all the time. Everybody understand that? It's a price to Shalom, everybody. Most High in Christ blessed. My name is Yehoshua. We're the same organization, Israel United in Christ. Our main purpose is to come out here to teach our people their nationality and how to repent. All right? To teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans that, number one, you're God's chosen people. You are the Israelites. You are the people that the Bible's been talking about the entire time. From Genesis to Revelation has always been about the Israelites. And the second point is that those people, those Israelites, are in sin right now and need to repent out of their sins and return back to their heritage. That's right. Let's, st let's start at, drop everything you got, go to Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Who got the one in Sirach about the heritage? 24, 24, 23. 24, 23. So let's get those two. All right, bring that up. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. I'm going to make my way to your question about the vaccines and abiding by the laws of the land and abiding by the laws of the Most High God, all right? And I want you also uh, expound on that word repent, okay? Okay, okay great. Because a lot, of, a lot of us, man, we don't, get, we, don't, we don't get much of that in the church about that word. And a lot of us still walk around here sleep because we don't know how to repent. Okay, so, yeah, so, 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 so expound on that heavenly, man. Still repent. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Keep going. Sure. And thou, even thyself. So even Jeremiah, one of the mightiest prophets that you read about in the scriptures, read, shall discontinue from thine heritage uh -huh. that I gave thee. So the Most High God, Christ, through the hand of Moses, gave us, our people, a heritage. They gave us a heritage. We've discontinued from that heritage. We've adopted the heritage of our oppressor. Our oppressor has taught us to sin because his natural ways are sinful. And we've adopted those sinful ways as a heritage. We've forsaken the righteousness that God gave us in his laws. So that's exactly why we'll transition to the point about repentance. Repentance is gonna be more important than the vaccine. All right? When you got a conscious, when you when you when your conscience has been cleared and clean through repentance and coming back to God's laws, then the vaccine and Romans 13 and all that's gonna make a little bit more sense. Okay. All right. And so I can't deal with too many questions at once. Can a seared conscience be, be, be clean? Can a, a seared conscience be clean? That's up to the Lord. That's up to the Lord. Some people's consciences have been seared to the point where they will not repent. No matter how we explain this Bible, they will not receive that they are an Israelite, that they have to keep God's laws. But we're not out here for those people. We are here for the people whose conscience has not been seared. It's been tainted, it's been polluted, but this Bible can clean it up. That's right. So that's what we are out here to do. We are here to wash the minds of our people with the water of this word. Right. Read that again. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from, the her from thine heritage that I gave thee. All right, so now we're gonna define what is the heritage that the Most High God gave to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives. You got it? Go ahead, pull it up. Sirach chapter 24, verse 23. What is the heritage that we discontinue from? What is it? 
What is it that we were supposed to be doing that we're not doing anymore? What is it that we used to do before this man put us on cargo ships and brought us as slaves over here to the Americas? What were we doing before that time frame? Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 24 and verse 23. So the question you're gonna start asking yourself, did I shave my face before I came over here as a slave? Did I celebrate Christmas before I came over here as a slave? Did I go to church on Sunday as my own heritage before I came here as a slave? See? And the answer to all those questions is no. You didn't do any of those things. That's right. You did those things when you discontinued from your heritage yeah, and you right. adopted the ways of Satan. Right. Right. Read. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God. Uh -huh. Even the law which Moses. Even the what? The law. The law. The law. So what we're talking about right now is God's laws. Everything you find in this book from Genesis to Revelation is the book of the law. Read. Even the law which Moses commanded for inheritance. For what? For inheritance. Read. Unto the congregation of Jacob. The congregation of Jacob whose name was changed to Israel is what you find here. The Israelites, his descendants. Right. And the heritage that the Israelites have fallen away from, that they've discontinued from, is what? Keeping God's what? His law, statutes, and commandments. His law, statutes, and commandments. So the whole concept of repentance is you turning from the heritage that you've adopted in your sins, turning away from that, and adopting the heritage of God's laws. That's right. All right, so I'm gonna give you repentance real quick. I'm gonna give you repentance. Give me uh, Matthew 4 and 17, and then give me Ezekiel 18 and 30. Matthew 4 and 17, Ezekiel 18 and 30. My brother asked a great question. Well, can you elaborate on repentance? Absolutely, brother, because you got to repent. There's sins that you're in the midst of right now that you must turn from. There's a heritage that we can see that you've adopted right now that's not the heritage that I gave thee, thus saith the Lord. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 17. Read. From that time, Jesus. Who? Jesus. Read began to preach uh -huh. and to say, repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. This is what Christ is commanding you. I ain't catch your name. What's your name? Uh, Donnell. Donnell. Donnell? Yeah. All right, so Donnell, Christ is preaching to you. He's not here on the earth right now, but he made sure when these words came out, people were making record of them. So then in 2021, when we come to Norfolk, Christ can still deliver that message to you, Donnell. So he's preaching to you right now, right? For the kingdom of heaven, is at hand. So repent, Darnell, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at the world. Look at the state of the world that we're in. We're on the cusp of World War III. Right. America is going to get destroyed. The Bible prophesies that there's only going to be three world wars, and two of them have already passed. So once the third world war comes, Christ is returning to destroy everybody that has not returned back to their heritage. Peace. And that judgment is for you, Donnell, if you don't repent. But Matthew 4 and 17 says, there's a kingdom of heaven at hand for you if you repent. So let's define what repentance is. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 30. This is the elaboration, the explanation of what does it mean to repent. Read. Therefore, I will judge you. The most High God, Christ, the angels, our own brothers, we will all be judged. Read. I will judge you. He will o, judge us. Read. O house of Israel. O house of Israel. All these people on this sign. Read. Everyone according to his ways. So you're going to be judged according to your ways. So my brother earlier, he brought out how uh, the judgment is going to come and the books are going to be open. The books or the records that the angels are taking on your life right now are going to be compared to this Bible, this book of life right here. And if there's differences, you're gonna be judged in an evil fashion. But if there's similarities, you're gonna be judged in a righteous fashion. Read. Everyone according to his ways, Read. saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. Repent. Do what? Repent. The Bible's gonna tell you what it means to repent. Read. And turn from all your transgressions. You gotta turn from your transgressions. Read. So the in, so iniquity so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So it uses the word transgressions and iniquities, which which sums up a three-letter word that starts with an S. What is it? Sin. 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 
sin, sin, sin. So you got to figure out what your sins are and you got to turn from them. So the Bible says, don't do this, but you're doing that, you got to turn from that. The Bible says, do this and you're not doing that, you got to turn from that. Define what sin is. Come on, stay with me. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. So the scripture says that repentance means to turn from your transgressions, to turn from your iniquities. I'm going to give you another word. The Bible is like a thesaurus. It'll use different words that mean the same thing. But you got to have the understanding to piece them together. Read. Whosoever commit a sin. Committed what? Commit a sin. Read. Transgressive. Whoa. Transgressive. There we go again. That's that same word. Whosoever committed sin. Transgressive what? Also the law. The law. So sinners transgress or go against or break God's laws. God has laws on how you should dress. God has laws on how you should eat. God has laws on what days you should celebrate. God has laws on what day you would go to church. Right. God has laws for all these things. God has laws for how to deal with your spouse, how to deal with your children. If you don't follow these things in God's law, you are considered a sinner. And you have to repent from those sins. And if you don't, there's no kingdom of heaven for you. No kingdom of heaven for you. Christ taught that in the New Testament. Keep reading. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. I'm gonna give you an example. Brother Donnell, go to Leviticus 21 and five. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse five. Leviticus chapter 21 verse five. I'm gonna give you an example that a lot of our brothers, uh, a law that a lot of our brothers don't keep. A sin that a lot of our men, of our our race, our nationality of, of people are breaking right now. Read. The book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh-huh. They shall not make boldness the, upon their head. The they is the men of the nation of Israel. It says they shall not make boldness upon your head. Your head is everything from the neck up. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So there's even more distinction there. You can't shave your beard, you can't make any baldness on your head. So you didn't know God's laws before the, before today. So repentance is you, we can see that you shave your beard. Repentance is, damn, I didn't know that the law says I can't shave. So I'm gonna turn from that iniquity, I'm gonna turn from that transgression, and I'm not gonna shave my beard anymore. Nobody asked if you could grow a full beard. The Bible says don't shave your beard. God didn't give any conditions for you to commit your iniquity. Right. Give me Sirach 15 and 20. I'm going to help you out with that. Because a lot of our brothers like to make an excuse to continue doing what they're doing. And I'm hoping that's not what you're doing, but the Bible will speak on that as well. Sirach chapter 15 verse 20. Read that. This is the book of Sirach chapter 15 and verse 20. Uh-huh. He have commanded no man. God did not give a commandment for what? To do wickedly. He didn't command a man to do wickedly. Read. Neither hath he given any man license to sin. So he didn't give you a license to shave your beard because of how deep or how full your beard grows. He just said don't shave it. He didn't, he didn't give a license for a sister to have a man's spirit on. She got to repent from that. He didn't give you a license to celebrate Christmas because the Bible said, don't do it. What's your question? Uh, back, back, back to the, uh, the shaving of the beard and the beard yeah. and all that stuff. Is, is, that, is, was, is that only uh, to the house of Judah? No, no. Because the Indian, uh, you, you look at the, the, the Indian man. Some of them can't grow beards. Thank you. Right. You can grow a beard, you shave it. But if someone can't grow a beard, are they, are they shaving the beard? Are they making baldness? Are you making baldness if you can't grow hair? Yes or no? Well, no, I get absolutely. Bald, I get bald on my head, but I don't get bald over here. Right, good. So, so this is a perfect example. The Bible describes a brother like this as forehead bald. So because his hair doesn't grow on the top, God did not give him a license. Oh no, God made me bigger. All right, hold, hold, hold your peace, hold your peace. Hold your peace, I'm talking. Because his hair does not grow at the top, 
God did not give him license or authority to say, all right, now go ahead and match the rest of your head with the bald spot. That's a sin. He said, don't make baldness. He didn't give you any stipulations, no conditions. Under no condition does an Israelite man shave his face or his head. Right. That's how simple that is. All right? Now, you asked a good do, do, question earlier. Do you know that uh, when, when our ancestors were brought over here on the ships, uh -huh. chained down on the, on, the, on the barges of the ship, yeah. did you know when they, they, they also were shaved and stripped of all of it? Did you know that? Yeah, what, you not what, know that? What your, ma what your slave master did to you and what you choose okay, to do. Okay, now that's... that's now, hold on, hold on. Huh? What you choose to do today with your own actions is two completely different things. True, true that, true So that. if you choose true. to go home next week when that five o'clock shadow starts to come in and put the Mach 3 on your face, the Gillette on your face, lather it up. Bring it up. You are willfully sinning. There is no kingdom of heaven for you. All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Because you had asked another good question earlier. I need to make sure all these dots are connected. Well, can you explain how do we get to this condition today? And I'm going to make it as simple and plain for you as possible. Our people, our men are in this condition today because they're shaving their face. It's that simple. Give me verse 15. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. This is a prophecy long before we came over here on slave ship. Read. But it shall come to pass. It will come to pass. So this is a prophecy. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes. So God gave a commandment for a man not to shave their face. So let's say you were correct. And the so-called the so-called Negroes that came over here, let's say they had already shaved their face before they got on the slave ship. Let's say they already did. What does the Bible say? That you, it shall come to pass if that will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So that, that right there tells us the reason why we came over here on slave ships. If we shaved our face, that's the reason why we came over here on slave ships. Right. Because the Bible said, if you break the laws, one of the laws says don't shave. So that means if you shave, curses are going to come upon you. Okay, now check this out, my brother. All right, go ahead. What he just said, uh, what, what he just said, what God, what God said, if we don't do this, that, and that, then all of this is going to come upon you? Correct. Okay, he, he, he told us that they're in, in, in our land, in, in our land, right? No, we weren't in our land yet. No, he, he, didn't, tell us, he didn't tell us that while we was on the ships. He didn't tell us that before we got on the ship. He told, he told us that while we were there. While Israel, the, the 12 tribes of Israel were over there. So we, we rebelled against him in our own land uh -huh. over there, right? Okay, so, and to, to this day, to, to this day we, where we're living right now, breathing right now, he said, if you, do, if you don't do this and that and that and that, this is going to happen to you, okay? So that right. happened over there, right? Uh, and we came, we came over here, fast forward, right, 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 right? So what we're doing, we're living under the curses that God had, that, had, that God had basically authorized for us to live under. Absolutely, that's absolutely okay, correct. Okay? Absolutely correct. Okay, so we're right. living under the curses that he authorized us to live under, right? Let me, let me finish that. that let, me, let me so, let the Bible speak. Let me so, let the Bible so, speak. So, so, hold your peace real quick. So, let, let, me, let, me, let me finish. You're making a lot of points. We got to make sure that the Bible is making the main point. Have you finished making your point? No, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. So you made one point, right? So the, the first point is that... I just don't want to forget, brother. I'm not going to interrupt you. I got you. I'm making sure we're on the same page. We got a lot of people listening, and our attention span isn't that quick. So even we don't talk that long, we'll talk and then read the Bible. This is just a quick question. Okay, go ahead. I don't know, but I'm asking you. Go ahead. So isn't it also important that we also be obedient under the curses that we're living under, ordained by our God? Is it or is it not? Obedient to who? The chastisement that our God get, has put on us. Is it or is it not? I don't, I'm not following your question. No, what we need to be what we need to be obedient to is God's law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We need to be obedient to God's law. Right. The reason that remember reason God that said my children. The reason, he said my children. I chastise. They love my chastise. The reason that, that we're in this condition is because we were disobedient to God's laws. So as we're receiving the correction from God for breaking his laws, uh -huh. it's important that we become obedient to God's laws to right. fix the correction, to fix the correction. All right, so let's, let, let's let the Bible speak about some of the points that you made. 
We ran first 15. Let's get first 45. I got you next. Finishing up with my brother. See, find yourself on that sign. See if that brother's on that sign. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. So you made a point about how we're living out curses now that God ordained for us a long time ago while we were on that side of the earth. Read. And shall pursue thee. The Bible says that the curses will come upon you and will pursue you. So what you said was biblical. The curses started over there, now we're over here. And the curses are over here. Because the prophecy said, no matter where you go, the curses are gonna follow you. So keep reading. And overtake thee. Not only will they follow you, but they will overtake you. They will destroy you, they will consume you. Keep reading. Till thou be destroyed. Until you don't even know who you are anymore. The curses will come upon you and your children and your children's children until it gets that bad. Right. Keep reading. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And even if you look at us today, the reason why we still suffer the curses today is because we're still not hearkening to the voice of our God. Right. God still said a long time ago, don't shave your face. In 2021, we're living in the curses, still shaving our face. Teach. So those curses are gonna be perpetual until our people do what? Repent. Repent. Go to verse one. I'm going to give you the other side. The curses are not forever. The curses are not going to last forever. The curses are going to last until a certain number of our brothers repent and return back to the law. That's what you read about in Revelation. You read about the return of the, the nation of Israel coming back to repentance and God reestablishing the earth back to the Israelites in its natural order. But that number hasn't been sealed yet. That's why brothers still strung out on drugs. That's why sisters are still baby mamas. That's why we're still the last hired. We're still the first fire. We still get knees on our neck because right. God is trying to get our attention. Keep reading. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse one. This is how we relieve ourselves of the curses. Because you got to think if, if we made an, a covenant with God, that covenant was not just for curses. The curses only came if we broke the covenant, but there had to be something else if we kept the covenant. Read. And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. and thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is the opposite. If you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord God, read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. All right, so I'm going to give you some examples. So the opposite side, if we didn't hearken, that means that we shaved our face. That means we didn't have fringes on our clothes. That means that we went to church on Sunday because God never said to do that. It means that we celebrated the holidays of the same men that put us in slavery. We adopted his religions. We adopted the Arabs religions, which put us in slavery before the white man. Curses came from all of those actions. But God said, if you do hearken to my voice, if you do hearken to my covenant, if you do follow my statutes and my judgments, meaning what? If the men stop shaving their beard, so you look around, you see the brothers in purple, we're trying to apply verse 1 That's right. through 14 because we know the benefits of keeping God's commandments are going to be what we just read, what, what, what we're about to read. And that comes from not shaving our face. That comes from keeping the Sabbath day and just using Sunday as the first day of the week, right. like God established it. By celebrating the Passover, tabernacles, the new moons, all these things God commanded that we do. And this is what he said what happened if we did what he said. Read. Right. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So what we're reading about is repentance. This is what's going to happen when the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, natives, gather themselves under one heritage, disregard all of the slave master's laws, I'm, I'm sorry, all of their religions, return back to God's laws. God said he would set us on high. So the brothers that you look at with the beards on their face, keeping the Sabbath day, fringes on their clothes, what we're trying to do is bring forth the kingdom of heaven. This is the kingdom of heaven. When Christ said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he's talking about Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse one through 14. Right. That is the kingdom of heaven. Right. Us being on high above all nations is us being in the kingdom of heaven. Keep right. That's right. Read. Mm -hmm. And all these blessings, shall come on thee and overtake thee 
if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the same way the curses came upon us and overtook us, we're only going to 2.30. Somebody keep checking the time. I got you. Two minutes. Okay, keep reading. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. So right now we're cursed in the city. But in the kingdom of heaven, all the cities will belong to us. We will be blessed in those cities. Read. And blessed shalt thou be in the field. We will own the fields. We won't be working the fields in right. the kingdom of heaven. That's the benefit of growing the beard out. That's the benefit of putting the fringes on. Right. That's the benefit of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Read. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Your children are the fruit of your body. They are going to be blessed. Our women, when they bear those children, will be blessed. The Bible says they won't, they won't suffer nine months anymore. They, only gonna, they won't even be suffering. It's going to be joyful for two or three months. And the children are going to grow up quickly. And we're going to have... As many children, we're going to have a small nation come out of us. Out of one man, it's going to be a whole nation. Awesome. Keep reading. And the fruit of thy ground, uh -huh. and the fruit of thy cattle. Right now, there, there is no, there's no blessing on the fruit of the ground here. That's why, that's why this man has created GMOs. Because he can't, he can't get the earth to produce how it's supposed to be produced. Right. Because yeah. even the earth is supposed to operate under God's laws. Right. The earth is supposed to rest every seven years, Teach. like we rest every seven days. Right. But because the earth doesn't get its rest, it can't bring forth the fruit like right. it's supposed to. The day of jubilee. It goes into those similar laws. Yes. The day, the year of jubilee. Yes. It's, it's similar to that. Yeah. Keep reading. The increase of thy kind uh -huh. and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Uh -huh. Blessed shall be. Best shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Wherever we go, we're going to be blessed. Right now, wherever we go, we're cursed. Keep reading. The Lord shall call thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. So we've acknowledged and we understand who our enemies are. The so-called white man is our enemy. The so-called Chinese man is our enemy. The so-called uh, Arab man is our enemy. Right. The so-called East Indian man is our enemy. Right. If, if you aren't of the so-called blacks, it's the so-called African man. He sold us to the white man. He's our enemy. Teach. And the Bible says that by us simply growing out our beard, simply marrying our women, simply saying to hell with Christmas, simply saying to hell with going to church on Sunday, Right. simply saying to hell with all the other nations, I don't care about them anymore. The Bible says all of these enemies are going to be what? Shall be smitten before thy face. That's what we're trying to get to. Right. So we don't need to take up guns and knives. We don't need, we, we're not marching with Black Lives Matter to try to get equal rights. Right. We don't give a damn about any of that. That's, That's right. right. The way for us to rise up against it's, these other nations, the way for us to get payback on our enemies is simply by stop shaving your beard. Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.